Ditching is always a high-risk option, but this US Airways A320 crew made the right decision under the prevailing circumstances. They then showed the world how ditching should really be done. They reminded us that this exercise can be completely survivable given piloting skill and the right weather and visibility conditions. Pilots are informed how ditching should be done, but practically nobody actually trains for it, even in a simulator. The reason why training is not offered is rather obscure, but it's probably a combination of two facts. It hardly ever happens nowadays, especially to jets, and the probability of passenger and crew survival is subliminally considered low, so it's not reckoned to be worth it. Propeller-driven aeroplanes normally have a better chance of ditching successfully simply because they can touch down more slowly on the water. But there has been one almost completely successful jet airliner ditching in the last 10 years. That was a Garuda Boeing 737-300 that suffered engine flame-out in a rainstorm and ditched on a river near Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Only one person died in that event. There have also been two successful business jet ditchings in the last decade, both in North America. In April 2003, a Dassault Falcon 20 ran out of fuel and ditched in the Mississippi near St. Louis. Everyone survived that. And in July the same year, a Canada-based Cessna Citation jet ditched with very limited pitch control because of a trim failure that set down in Oak Harbor, Victoria, near the shore. The two pilots, the only people on board the Citation jet, swam ashore. In 2005, a turboprop aircraft, a tune into ATR-72, ran out of fuel and ditched in the Mediterranean north of Sicily. There were 16 fatalities out of the 39 people on board. A high-wing aircraft like the ATR series gives less time for evacuation because the wings don't provide flotation until the fuselage has disappeared beneath the surface. And ditching in the sea as opposed to on a river is usually more risky because large waves and swell are more likely. But what of this US Airways A320 accident? What did the pilots face? Well, from the time the birds hit the aircraft's engine, the crew could see that they had insufficient power to remain airborne. And they were pretty sure that they couldn't glide back to LaGuardia or divert to Teterboro Airport. So, almost instantly, the crew turned left toward the Hudson River, looking out for any opportunity to put down on a large, flat, unobstructed piece of land. But no such land space existed within the distance pilots knew they could stretch their glide, so they committed to ditching as the best option and briefed the cabin crew to prepare for it. When the bird strike happened, the aircraft was at a height of about 3,000 feet, that's approximately 900 meters. From that height, they settled into a rate of descent of about 1,000 feet per minute, leaving flaps and gear up. The crew had about three minutes left to prepare for ditching. The considerations for ditching are basically these. Aim to touch down with the aircraft speed sufficiently high to retain full control because stalling and letting a wing drop would be disastrous. If one wingtip or engine touches the water before the other does, the aircraft swings violently and breaks up. On final approach to touchdown, selecting some flap allows a slower impact and ensures the aircraft attitude is not too nose high. Because if the nose is too high, the tail strikes the water, strikes the water first and can break off, letting water into the hull. This crew obviously got this aircraft speed absolutely right, and they're rightly receiving praise for having very cool heads.